We want to thank the Lord tonight for Brother Dishman. And we ask that he would come deliver the burden that God's laid on his heart and the word he's got for us. We um, just want to have a word of prayer for him before he comes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this man of God. And we thank you, Lord, for the message that you've given him. We pray, Father, that you would anoint his mind and anoint his tongue tonight that he might speak as your oracle. God, we would pray that you would lift him out of his self, that you would help him, Father, encourage him, strengthen him. Father, just give him the anointing, the unction from on high, that he would be able to deliver what souls here tonight need, Father. We pray, as he has said every night of the meeting, a rebuke upon the devil, because we know that he's here to kill, to steal, to rob. He's here to resist and oppose. That's his job. And Father, tonight we pray a rebuke upon him. And upon the powers of darkness, that your glorious truth and the gospel of Jesus Christ can go forth with power and with anointing. In Jesus' name, we ask these things humbly. Amen. I feel like we've been to church tonight, don't you? <laughs> Amen. Certainly enjoyed <clears throat> the good singing tonight. Appreciate your dear pastor. We was able to be with him today. And... Uh, we believe you got you a, a great pastor this time. We appreciate him. He's a humble man. He's got a real good spirit about him. As soon as I met him in Allo Pass, I saw what a sweet spirit he had. So we're thankful for your pastor and his wife and family. Appreciate you. We love you. I want you to know that. I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles and look with us over in the book of Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke chapter 4. And since our brothers already prayed, we're just going to read this scripture, okay? Luke 4, verse number 1. Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. When they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Jesus answered, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The devil, taking him up to a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Jesus having said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. In their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, when the devil had ended all these temptations, he departed from him for a season. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. <clears throat> I got saved when I was 18 years old. Raised in a Christian home, had a very godly mother, a very godly father, but all of their goodness didn't keep me from falling into sin. Since that time, I've had battles I've had to go through. Dark places. We all go through them, right? If you're not going through a valley right now, get ready. You soon will. We all go through them sometimes. The devil throws many things at us. Here he was coming against the Son of God. And I learned something from this passage of Scripture. What to do with the devil when he throws things at you. 
telling it is written. That's what my message is about tonight. It is written. Jesus, our example, when tempted by Satan, used the scriptures on Satan. He simply said, it is written. It worked for him, and it will work for us. You see, Satan likes to pick on tender, sensitive, obedient Christians, as these are always best Christians and workers for God. He can serve to discourage you and harass you by making you doubt your experience. You'll be unhappy and to a certain extent unsuccessful. Satan is the enemy of our souls. He don't care how. He steals our happiness just as as long as he steals it. And so, dear ones, some folks, seemingly nothing bothers them. They can override the Word of God and what the Bible says. Then there's others that are entirely too conscientious. And you know there's a ditch on each side of the road. So we need to move away from the ditches and go right down the straight and narrow pathway. Devil's a liar. You know how you can tell when he's lying? Every time he opens his mouth. If his lips are moving, he's lying. Now we hear voices. Sometimes it's from God. Impressions, somebody said, how can you tell the difference? Impressions that come from God are clear, easily to understood. Then we have our own voice. That's why the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding. And then the voice of the devil. I've never heard God speak audibly. I've never heard the devil speak audibly, but both of them have spoke to me. Amen. Amen. And so, how can you tell it's the devil? Any spirit that makes you feel downcast, depressed, is not of God. Any spirit that leaves you confused is not of God. God is not the author of confusion. So, I want to encourage you tonight. That's what we're going to try to bring a message of encouragement. A lot of people don't know what's written. So that's why we've got to study the Bible to find out what's written. That way, when the devil throws things at us, we'll know in the Word of God what we can put on the devil. The psalmist believed that in Psalms 119 and verse number 11. He said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You know, you're not going to know what the Word says if you spend all your time watching as the world turns, all my children, including the bold and the beautiful, and the young and the restless, on a search for tomorrow. They're searching for the guiding light. They live on the edge of night and they end up at the general hospital. If that's what your life consists of, then you're not going to know what's written. But what we need to know is what is written. Because the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, above all things, taking the shield of faith wherewith we shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. So what was it that the devil come up against you? He said, now if thou be the Son of God. So it only makes sense that the devil's going to come to you and he's going to come to me and he said, now if you was a Christian. He's going to try to make you doubt that you're a child of God. And if the devil comes to you and says, well, <clears throat> you're not really a Christian. Tell him it is written. Romans 10, 9, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the Mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse, verse number 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall 
be saved. It is written, amen, what we must do in order to meet the, the conditions of salvation. If we've met those conditions, God saved us. It is written, Acts 3, 19, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. If you'll repent, your sins can be blotted out. Uh, what must I do to be saved? Acts 16 and verse number 31, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and, thou, and thy house. The devil may whisper to you now, If you were really a Christian, you wouldn't be tempted along these lines. Just tell the devil it is written because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 4 and verse number 15, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And the Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and verse number 22, who did no sin, speaking of Christ, neither was God found in his mouth. So, because you're tempted does not mean you're not saved. No matter, <coughs> no matter what you're tempted with, it does not mean you're not saved because you're tempted because Jesus was tempted in all points like as we are, yet he did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Satan may say, well, you can't know for sure that you're saved. Well, I believe you can know for sure that you're saved. And if the devil tries to convince you and says you can't know, tell him it is written in 1 John 3, 14, we know that we've passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. It is written in 1 Timothy 1 and verse number 12, for I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Tell him it is written in 1 John 2 and verse number 3, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. It is written, 1 John 2 and verse number 5, but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we know him. Thank God 38 times there in the book of 1 John, he says we can know. The devil may say, you're not going to make it. You're not going to be able to stay saved. Tell him it's written. In Philippians 1, verse number 6, being confident in this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Tell the devil it is written, Jude, in verse number 24, now to him that is able to do, uh, him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Tell the devil that it is written in John 28, John the 10th chapter, that we're in the Father's hands and no man can pluck us out of the Father's hand. Satan may say, if you was really a Christian, you wouldn't be persecuted like this. Just tell him it's written in 2 Timothy 3.12. Yea, all that will live godly shall suffer persecution. Persecution. The devil may whisper to you, all oh, this temptation is more than you're going to be able to bear. Just tell him it is written in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There is no temptation taken you but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Satan may whisper, oh, the church of God is falling apart. The church of God is just going down. You just tell the devil it is written in Matthew the 16th chapter and verse number 18. Amen. Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God's church not going down. Amen. God's church is going up. And Satan may say, oh, there's not going to be enough grace to face this. You just tell the devil that it is written in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse number 9, my grace is sufficient for thee. You know what the devil tries to make me believe? Tries to convince you of the same. Nobody, oh, nobody has to go through what you go through. 
You, you, you've got a load that nobody, nobody's got a cross like you. There's all the other brothers in this church that they just getting by fine. And you're the guy to carry this heavy cross. Yeah. I read a story one time about a man. He just said, Lord, I, I don't want to carry this cross no more. I got the heaviest cross as anybody. He said, the Lord said, okay, let's lay it down right here. He just laid his cross down. He said, come with me. And he took him, and he went in this big room. And this is a big room, and this room was full of crosses. All kinds of crosses, all sizes and all shapes of crosses. And it's everywhere. He said, there's one. Yeah, well, that's a big one too. Well, here's another cross. Yeah, but that's a big cross. And he, he looked all, he spent hours walking in this big room looking at cross after cross after cross. There's everywhere crosses. The Lord said, you laid yours down, you take any cross in this big room. He kept walking around. Kept walking around looking for that cross that he could carry. And he said, I think I'll take this one. The Lord said, that's the one you came in with. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes we just think we got it bad. Amen. But we hadn't had to carry somebody else's cross yet. Amen. So you just stay true. And you just stay faithful to God. And the devil said, oh, God's left you. God's forsaken you. And you say, what have I done? Oh, I'm not going to tell you. That's the devil right there. If you've done something, God's going to let you know what you've done. Amen. And when the devil says that God's forsaken you, just tell him it's written in the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter and verse number 5, for he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's a promise in the word of God. Amen. You can be just like Jesus. You can put the word of God on the devil. And Satan may say, oh, God's not going to deliver you out of this mess. Have you ever been in a mess? Hey, man, I've been in a mess before. I didn't know what I was going to do. And the devil's right there. Oh, how are you going to get out of this? And I said, it is written in 2 Timothy 4, 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. That's what the promises. Thank God for the promises in the word of God. And Satan said, oh, Cedric. Amen. This weapon that's formed against you, it's going to be to your ruin. Just tell the devil, Isaiah 4, 54 and verse number 7, no weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. That's what the word of God says. Amen. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 1, verse number 19, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Thank God we got God on our side. Amen. He's on our side, and he's going to fight for us. And Satan may say, oh, it's over now. You're down for the count. Now what are you going to do? Just tell him it's written. Amen. In the book of Isaiah 43 and verse number 2, when thou passest through the waters, he didn't say if you pass through the waters, it's going to happen. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Amen. And he said, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, again, he is saying, now if it so happens that you have to walk through the fire, no, my friend, get ready. You're going to walk through the fire if you're the child of God. He, means, he said, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> Just tell the devil. It is written. Satan will say to you, God don't care about you. If God cared about you, you wouldn't have to go through this. Tell him it's written. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast in all thy care upon him, for he careth for you. I don't know what you're going through, amen, but I want you to know no matter where you're at in life, there's a God in heaven that cares about you. Don't you let the devil convince you for one moment that God does not care because God cares about his children. And Satan says, oh, God must have awful thoughts about you. Tell him it is written. 
in Jeremiah 29, verse number 11, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. They are pleasant thoughts and not evil. Praise God forever. The devil tried to make you think that God don't care about you and he thinks awful things. Just tell him it's written. God's got pleasant thoughts about you. If you're a child of God, and Satan may say, oh, it would be impossible for this mountain to ever be moved in your life. Tell him it is written in Luke 1 and 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. It might be hard for people to do, but with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Satan may whisper, oh, what are you going to do now? How do you think God's going to supply this need? And you see with capital letters, impossibility. Just go ahead and tell the devil it is written. Philippians 4, verse number 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. And the devil said, Well, God's not going to hear your prayer. You're wasting your time. You prayed all this time. God's not listening. Just tell him it is written in 1 Peter 3 and verse number 12. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. My Bible tells me that the, ear, the Lord's ears is open to the prayers of of the righteous. Amen. And the Bible lets me know in the book of James 5 and verse number 6, 16 that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much even in 2015. Thank God the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much and tell the devil it is written in John the 15th chapter and verse number 7 that ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. And Satan tells me sometimes, all right, just get up off your knees, stop your praying, stop your tears. It's not going to do any good to pray for your lost family members. Look how long you've prayed for your children. Look how long you've prayed for your husband. Look how long you've prayed for your wife. Look how long you've prayed for your brother your sisters, your neighbors. <coughs> it don't do no good to pray for people. I tell the devil every time he tells me that, it is written over in the book of Psalms 126 and verse number five, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. The Bible still says in the book of Isaiah, the 66th chapter, and verse number eight, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. And Satan may say, well, it's not going to do any good to call on God. God's not going to answer you. And I told the devil, it is written in Jeremiah 33 and verse number three, call upon me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I was preaching on this subject one time and I, I, I got to a point in the message and I said, you know what? I don't, I don't care what the devil throws at you. It don't matter what the devil says. I believe there's something we can come against the devil. That we, there's a scripture somewhere. There's a principle in the word of God. We can come up against the devil. And there was a man there at that camp meeting and his, his daughter didn't come, but he, he had a bunch of his grandkids. And he said, you said there was something in the Bible. No matter what the problem was, there's something in the Bible. The answer was in the Bible. He said, what about these rowdy kids? I said, it is written. Foolishness is bound in the heart of the child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Amen. It is written. Thank God for what God's put in the word of God. I thank God. We can stand on the promises of the word of God. And uh, the devil whispers. He says, God can't do that. God can't do that. And I told the devil, it is written in Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him that is able to do 
exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Praise God. We got a God in heaven that can do exceedingly abundantly above anything that our little minds can ask or think. And the devil said, you can't count on the promises of God. I know you're holding to the promises, but you can't believe the promises. And I said to the devil, it is written in 1 Kings 8 and verse number 56. I want you to listen to what the Bible says. It says, blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel. Listen. According to all he promised, there hath not failed one word of all of his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. Praise God. Not one promise that he gave Moses failed. Every promise in the word of God is yea and amen. And the devil will even say, I know the Bible says that, but it's not true. God must have lied. I said, it is written in Hebrews 6, 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, that we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that's set before us. And Satan whispered, this situation is even too hard for God. And I said, it is written. Genesis 18, 14, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Tell me, friend, what's too hard for God? The one that spoke this world into existence, what's too hard for God? Amen. You know what he did? God stood on nothing and created a world. And by the hammer of his own will, he struck the anvil of his omnipotence. And when he did, sparks flew there from. And he reached out and he caught them on the tips of his finger. And he flung them out in space. And he decked the heavens with stars. And when he created this great world, when he finished, nobody said a word. Because there was nobody to say a word. He's God. And there's nothing too hard for him. And the devil may whisper, the Lord's not going to deliver you out of this affliction. Tell him it is written. Psalms 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Praise God. And Satan may whisper, this tragedy, this heavy burden is going to move you in your experience. You're not going to be able to stand this. Tell him it is written. Psalms 52 and verse number 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. Listen. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. God's in control of this thing. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And Satan said, there's no way out of all these troubles. I tell you, in my life, I'd look, there's trouble on every hand. There's no way out of these troubles. It is written, Psalms 34, 6, this is one of my favorite scriptures. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Praise God for promises like that. This poor man cried, and the Lord came, and he saved him out of all of his troubles. And Satan whispered. There's no way that anything good is going to come out of this situation. You ever told you that? There's no, no good going to come out of this. I said it is written. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Did you hear, hear what I said? A lot of folks don't understand that. He didn't say everything within itself is good. But he said everything that happens to you who love the Lord, it's going to all work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Now, if I went over to brother and sister 
Dave Fraser's house. And they said, we're going to have a meal. And I went over there, and I know they wouldn't do this, but I went there and sat down, and they had bowls, and they served nothing but white egg yolk, white egg, you know, not cooked, just, just, just the egg part, you know, and uh, that'd be hard to swallow, wouldn't it? And I go over here to brother, go home, brother Cedric and his wife, and uh, they had me over for a meal, and all they got's bowls of sugar. Well, that wouldn't go good to be a diabetic, would it? Then I go over to Brother Ron Pletcher's, and they have me for a meal, and they don't give me nothing but a bowl of white flour. All of these things by themselves are no good, but by the hands of a skillful cook, it makes angel food cake. <laughs> Amen. That's what God does. He takes the distasteful things of life because we love him and he turns it in to something good. Every one of us can look at things in our life and say, I don't see where any good came out of that. But God worked it together. The all-wise, the all-knowing God, he turned the whole thing around and he worked it for our good. I'm so glad that God's like that. Amen. And Satan said, you can't get the victory over this. Look how long you've been bound. You can't quit smoking. You can't quit drinking. You can't quit cussing. You can't quit gambling. You can't give this up. You can't do this. You can't live like a Christian. He tells a lot of people that. And every time the devil tells you that, say, it is written. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. It's not us. It's God in us that given us the power to be what we ought to be for him. Amen. Satan may say, he may bring fear upon you. Some of you is getting up in age. And you don't even have to be old to die. The devil likes to make you think, what are you going to do when you die? When you have to look death in the face. What are you going to do when you have to walk down all by yourself to that dark valley of death? The devil says, ain't nobody going to be with you. It's going to be scary. The devil told me that one day, and I said, Devil, it's written. Psalms 23, 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God's not going to forsake you when it comes time to leave this world. He's going to walk with you down through the valley of the shadow of death. And Satan said, no one else has to go through the things you go through. Tell him it's written. 1 Peter 4, 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing is happening. It's not strange. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 9, Who resist in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Others face the same things. The devil said, you can't find rest. I said, it's written, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. You know what I believe tonight? There's victory for every accused soul. I believe folks can have victory in this life. I don't believe you have to wait to get to heaven to have victory. I believe we can have victory right now. It might seem like a bitter pill, and it might take a lot of effort to swallow it. But what I'm getting ready to say to you is a sure cure. It's really simple. 
All you've got to do is believe what is written in spite of what your feelings or the devil may say. Who are we going to believe? The devil, our feelings? I'd just rather stand on the word of God. We must stand upon his promises. The devil said, you messed up. You sinned. You failed God. You might as well throw in the towel. There's no use to go on. You can't do it. There's no hope for you. Tell him it is written. 1 John 2, verse number 1 and 2. My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He's a propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. You don't have to give up because you sinned. You don't have to give up because you failed God. Thank God we've got an advocate with the Father. Because you failed, that don't mean you're a failure. No one is a, ever a failure till he stops trying. You know what I believe? It's better to attempt much and occasionally fail than to attempt, attempt nothing and achieve it. Failure is never final unless you get up one more time than you fall down. If you'll get up just one more time than what you fall down, you'll hear him say, well done. Don't let some initial failure cause you to go away discouraged saying, I can't make it. You may be here tonight. You may not be a Christian. And the devil may be saying to you, you've been too bad to be saved. And there's no hope for you. Even you can say to the devil, it is written. Luke 5, 31, and Jesus answered and said unto them, they that are whole hath no need of a physician but they that are sick. I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Some folks have felt like over the years, as I've pastored and held revivals, they felt like they had blasphemed against the Holy Ghost, that they were predestinated to be lost, that there was no hope for them. But it is written, Hebrews 2, 9, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Let me tell you something. I don't have time to preach on predestination, but nobody has been predestinated to go to hell. Nobody has been predestinated to go to hell. 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In a crowd this size, there could be somebody here tonight that's not saved. If you're not saved, if you don't know that you're saved, you ought to come and be saved. In a crowd this size, no doubt there's people here who are going through a hard place. They're down in the valley. Things have been going wrong in your life. It could be a physical problem. It could be a financial problem. It could be a problem in the family. I don't know. But there's very well could be someone here, and you're, you're having a hard time. I want to encourage you to come and pray about it. God cares about it. we got to do something, though. He said, casting all your care upon him. That's what you have to do. He careth for you. Bring your burdens to the Lord and lead them there. What a friend we have in Jesus. You know what that song says? It says, many times we forfeit many things because we don't bring everything to God in prayer. You can bring the little things to him. You can bring the big things to him. There's nothing too hard for him. Maybe you're, you're discouraged because of the things that you've went through and you're going through. I've found in my Christian life since I was 18 years old at an altar of prayer, encouragement. I've gained strength many times around an altar of prayer, seeking the face of God. Are there Christians here who would like to come and ask God to help you through this dark place in your life? 
Friend, joy comes in the morning. Thank you, Father, for helping us preach this message. We pray that it will be an encouragement to your people. We pray if there's one here that's not saved, that you'd speak to their heart. And we pray, dear God, for Christians who possibly are going through discouraging times and uh, they don't hardly know what to do about some situations that they're faced with. I pray that you'd bring understanding and comfort hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Everyone stand.